All right, everybody, here it is. Winter weather outlook 2024-25. All right, we go to the other side of the world. We always start our winter weather outlook with the drivers. What are the main drivers of the winter ahead? And this winter, it will be the La Nina, which has been slowly developing over the last several months. Basically, what this means is the water temperature, the ocean water temperatures, along the equator in the Pacific Ocean have been trending below average. So that's the La Nina. That's going to be the, one of the main drivers that we'll be watching. Of course, we have the La Nina, but we also have other factors that we watch. And these are the locations that we watch. And this is just a handful of them. Uh, there's actually about a dozen other places that we watch. But we look at what's happening in the Indian Ocean. We look at additional development in the equator. What's happening over the Himalayan mountains, over Asia, northern Pacific, the Arctic, the northern... Atlantic, just to name a few spots uh, where we watch for behavior. What we watch here uh, as we look over the Indian Ocean is above or below normal water temperatures. We look at snow cover over the, uh, the middle of uh, Eastern Europe and Western Asia. We look at the behavior of the Arctic and how it influences the Northern Pacific. So we look at a whole bunch of different uh, uh, different uh, spots around the world and all of these kind of work in concert with one another all right the other element that we also watch is the behavior right along the equatorial pacific where that la nina is it's called the mjo and this was one of the main drivers of our winters over the last couple of winters they work in different phases and if it's in a warm phase you get a warm winter a lot of times and if it's in a cold phase you end up getting those more frequent periods of cold so what are we looking at when we combine all of these different elements together what we're looking at now is a big ridge to develop over the northern Pacific. This will allow for the northern half of the country, Pacific Northwest, more than likely to stay below normal. Sure, it'll warm up, but more than likely below normal temperatures. And then you have that huge ridge over the southeastern U.S., and that basically means, that although we will have some cold, I think our temperatures will average out above normal for the winter overall. Now, here's the issue. We have this battle zone that's going to develop, southwest and northeast jet stream here. And when you have that battle zone, that typically means uh, you're going to have those systems that produce snow, rain, and a lot of those mixed type, uh, type setups. Uh, we didn't have a lot of that last winter, but we did two winters ago. This was the winter in 2023-24, last winter, right? Below normal snowfall across much of the northern half of the country, much of the Great Lakes, with above normal snowfall right there in the middle of the country because of some big snows. So what are we looking at here? December, January, and February. We're looking at right now, we're looking at below normal snowfall yet again with above normal snowfall just to the northwest of where that battle zone is going to be. But what's different this winter is that because we're heading into a relatively weak La Nina, in the middle of winter, in the heart of winter, it's going to allow for these clipper systems to interact with this very warm uh, Great Lakes. And so we're going to have more frequent lake effect snow events uh, than we've had over the last couple of winters. Uh, either way, it's probably not going to bring snowfall uh, above normal. Sure, we're going to see more snow than we've had over the last couple of winters. When we look at the averages over the last 20 years, it's right around 55 to 60 inches. And we've had eight straight winters with below normal snowfall. And I think this winter, when we look at the averages, we're going to average somewhere between 35 and 45. And I think we can easily double or triple those numbers as you head into the snow belt. We mentioned temperatures, right? Above normal temperatures. When we look at the averages for December, January, and February, however, this winter, compared to last winter and the winter before, we will have more frequent periods where we do trend colder. Uh, last winter, we didn't have much of it. We had the middle of January where we had the coldest period. But I still think we're going to have the seesaw-type uh, temperature pattern, which will allow for maybe three, four, five-day stretches with temperatures below normal. But overall, it's still going to be above normal temperatures when we average it all out and below normal snowfall.